Hello everyone and welcome back to London for our second ever Soho Bikes TV and tonight we've got a very special guest, three times a world champion, a winner of 18 World Cup races, the greatest downhill World Cup racer of all time, it is Minamina! <laughs> Quick, we had a, a, a soccer race last week. I rode for a charity, and right into the start, my heart was like racing. So I decided to just take it really easy for the first 20, 30 k's. And by that time, my heart was still racing, and I couldn't really figure my way back. So I just decided to do the rest of the 100k loop. Went to the cardiologist, had some ECGs, and I had um, atrial uh, fibrillation or something. <laughs> Something like that. This might be the last time we ever, he ever gets interviewed. This could be like the, the Amy Winehouse, though, her last interview. She died of the same thing. <laughs> Greg's not on crack and smack, but... <laughs> Are you? <laughs> Another exclusive for so So, yeah, so my, my heart had this irregular imbalance this last week, so the doctor told me that no more coffee, no more any drinks, and no more alcohol. And uh, I said my first one this week, down in the corners. It if is. he drops dead through this, then we'll be suing Stella. <laughs> <laughs> right, and Greg, so I must admit, like, you know, you had your first World Championship win back in 2003, then you won it again in 12 and 13, and then in 14, you weren't that good. And I must admit, you know, a man of your mature age, I sort of thought, he's hung his boots up here, this is the end of it. But. Like, did this year surprise you? And uh, you know, you are 34 now, you're, you're getting on a bit for this sport, but you're still as good as you've ever been. Yeah, I think the last year was kind of a, a bad reflection because I'd come off a knee injury. I did my ACL and meniscus in the last round of the World Cup. And uh, then was third of the first round in Peter Marisburg, which is quite a peddly course, and coming back with that knee injury. Done right there in the past, yeah. to be honest. And then I got disqualified in Cairns. That's right. And that's, that's what true. killed my results. So I think if it wasn't for that, I would have been Bit maybe better, in the right? fourth or fifth or yeah. still not really up there. But this year was great, yeah. I mean, I, I keep putting it to the bike. The bike has grown maybe 40 mils, maybe 50 mils even. And uh, I, I just feel it fits me a lot better. I'm quite a lot taller than the other guys. And uh, now I'm more centralized in the bike and just kind of let go, a little hang loose a bit. Yeah. Weirdly enough, on a, I, I tested an ATX1 this week, last week. And I measured it up against the, the new giant downhill bike. It was seven inches longer than the new one. Seven inches, dude. Yeah. They've changed a lot. And they're, they're incredible right now, aren't they, the bikes? The bikes are, and I think that's just uh, brought this whole new thing on lengthening the bikes, and it's, it's stuck. It was an incredible season. It couldn't have started a lot worse for you. You had a broke thumb, yeah. right, two weeks before Lord. But like, then, you, then in Fort William, you, know, you won there, and you equaled Steve Peet's record of 17 World Cup wins. I mean... What's motivated you for the last 15 years? And, and was that part of it? To, was that on your mind to, to get his record and then to beat it? No, it, the, the record thing has only come into play this last year. And uh, I was just thinking, I'm so close to doing it, I might as well just get it done, because it's just how I've done it, you know? And, and, uh, but it's, it's never been a part of my career at all. I, I've wanted to really? win. No, I, going into like uh, Leo Gang World Champs, I thought, well, if I, if I win, Today, then I can race in South Africa and win my third World Champs, and that'll be a nice kind of round number. And so I managed to do that, and I really won three World Cups. And I don't know, I just, I don't really know what, I'm, I'm quite a competitive person. I think that, um, I Somewhat, just, so, even though yeah. you don't show it, to be no, honest. Well, no, no. But I, I just enjoy racing, and it's, things have changed. There's new competition out there. It's, uh, the racing's kind of changed a bit as well, and I quite enjoy that. So then you went on and won Lenza Hyder on a track that, I wouldn't have said you'd have won on because it was so short, really, more than anything else, and quite. Intense. I didn't think I could podium on that either. Didn't you? So, no. And was it was it horrible. It was dry and dusty, and I was getting so confused. It had the same corners. It'd like come down here to like a swooping right with like a rut, and then it'd be like this bank corner, and then it's right. Yeah, it was just. Oh, I don't know. So not on your mind there that you could take the record. One more win would have set oh, you alone as eighteen after qualifying. Uh, I knew if I needed it up, I, I could 
have a decent run, but yeah, I didn't expect to win. And it's incredible. You've won 18 World Cups. It surely, what, what was that feeling like? It felt like any other race. Did it? It doesn't happen that you often. You should have seen the look so. on Petey's face. <laughs> <laughs> it meant more of him to him than you took it off him. I, I, yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, I was stoked to win a second race of the season. I mean, that hasn't happened for a while. Uh, to win one race and then to, to back it up with another was pretty cool. But I didn't, at the moment, think of, of 18 wins. But that party definitely... Uh, I mean, you went pretty big, didn't you? Yeah, we, we, we went pretty big. I remember seeing you there. Yeah, I had a good go as well. <laughs> <laughs> Some of us have to get out for work on a Sunday, though. There's a bit of cross-country to talk about, which is quite tricky with a hangover. It is, yeah. It gives you something to talk about. I don't, try <laughs> to keep the, the alcohol that away from cross-country racing, funnily enough. They're not, they're not that bunch, really. They don't really go for that as much. But today, of all days, we're seeing you tonight, Steve announced that at 44 years old, at the end of 2016, he's going to retire. Is that going to leave a big hole in the team? Because you're a pretty tight It is. It's, it's, yeah, it's, it's going to be... I don't think we've found someone that could replace it. And I don't think we will. And, and I think we've, we're trying to keep him on as long as we can. I think the, the retirement out is, is also just to keep the team as it is. It's been like this for, for some years now. It's been a really successful um, triangle of riders. So... Um, Quite diverse, isn't it, the team, really? Like, you've got yeah. Rat, who's just... <laughs> rat. <laughs> just over there, isn't he? He's just over there. He's just um, He's growing, out there, dude. growing He's his like... vegetables, doing yoga. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and then you've got Pete, who's like... I wouldn't say serious, but... He's more like you than he is Rat, although that's not difficult to not be like Rat, is it? But... <laughs> There's only, like, space for one hippie on the team. Yeah. <laughs> Josh takes that, for yeah. sure. Yeah, so it'll be weird without Steve. When he's going to be around, isn't he? I, th I hope so. Yeah. And you know, it'll be odd not having him at the races. What's Gwyn like to race? I mean, I mean, have you ever seen anyone with the pace of Gwyn, like the raw speed of Gwyn on a race run? Well, yeah. I mean, I think Gwyn has just like brought this new way of racing where it's just hard and fast and yeah. the whole way down. There's just they, they, he doesn't let up at all. But there's also a side where it's where it's on or it's quite off. Yeah. And so I don't really know what clicks it over because it seems like he should be doing well on those tracks where he doesn't. So yeah, that's right. Yeah, like what he did in Wyndham this year was just bonkers, really. Wasn't Crazy. It? On a short track, like that Insane. was that was one of the wildest things I've ever seen. Yeah. I just don't know where he made where he made that time. No. I think he just rides a lot harder than everyone else. Yeah. Right, we've got some questions from Twitter now. One from Tescali forty six. What's your most memorable moment at a World Cup or World Championship event? I think um, my most memorable, well, would have to be racing at home. I mean, it's not often you get to race world champs at home and win it all. That, that's pretty special. Yeah. I think that podium for me was, was the most special podium. What is it that makes you, and this is unarguable, but under pressure, you are better? I, probably because I'm shitting myself at the top. <laughs> have you ever had to race someone that's like trying to, or someone chasing you with a knife or something, you can run really fast when you need to. Yeah. I think I'm, I'm just so nervous at the top of a race. I like, I just try and like, I'm all to myself, you know, I, I, people think it's serious, I'm just really nervous. I'm just going through my whole run and trying to get ready. So that kind of, the nerves and the pressure you put yourself really yeah. focuses you. Yeah, for sure. Right, one here from Ed Mir. After, surely after a week with Rat Boy, you want to slap him. Do you have to go to your special place? <laughs> it's good having Kathy around because she cleans up after him. But the few races that she wasn't around, it does get quite, <laughs> it's quite tough. But nothing that you need a slap for. I mean, he's, he's just a hippie, you know. <laughs> That's the only thing that, you know, the rest of it's cool. I mean, we had a good um, carbonara What's together. The, the food. Never heard Spaghetti of carbonara. <laughs> we Cut, spaghetti well together. carbonara. Remember we made that in... Uh, accent, right? Carbonara. Spaghetti what carbonara. Did I say? You mean like... like yeah, we, we, had a, we made a carbonara together. Carbonara. <laughs> what is it called? Carbonara. Carbonara. That's better. We had a carbonara. <laughs> Bacon and eggs and shit. Yeah, and we used a bit of... Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Carbonara. Yeah. <laughs> I hate to correct you, but it's, you're saying it wrong. Okay, well, we'll leave it at a carbonara. <laughs> Good. That was better. Uh, one here from Charlie James. At the age of 34, how long will you stay with the Syndicate and are there other teams that offer you money to ride for them? Yeah, because we ride for free on the Syndicate. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, and all the teams I've been on, Santa Cruz is the bike that I've won the most on. So 
Is I, it? Yeah, for sure. I, I don't feel I need a change, and, and the environment's really good in the team, and, and we, we work really well as a team, so there's, there's no change for me in the future. Good. I th I'd probably ride out on Santa Cruz for sure. Perfect, cool. Yeah. One from Steve Tomlinson. Out of your 18 World Cup victories, which one's the most memorable? The last one. Really? Yeah, because it came, up, came up by surprise, really. I mean, obviously your first World Cup winner. Claudio was said you, he wrote you off in the pre-show. He's like, Minar can't deliver on this track. <laughs> it's too short for him. He wasn't being horrible. But, he, you know, you are associated with longer tracks because you, yeah. you, I don't know, you sort of don't really waste any energy, you look like you're doing nothing and you're pretty fit. Yeah. <laughs> I like to keep those rumours going. <laughs> yeah, I think the last one was the most memorable because it came by shock, you know, it was a surprise. And you smoked Petey for the record all time. <laughs> yeah. Won't go on about that. Do you reckon Gwyn will catch up with that? He's oh, be... for sure, I think Do you will. reckon? Yeah. Definitely. He's on about 11 or 12 now, isn't he? I, I don't know, but mm. um, I'm sure he will. Yeah, he's going all right. Mm. New bike for him next year. What bike's that? I don't know if we can release it here. I don't think they put an official. Have they put an official well, thing there? He's coming back on a. <laughs> so like, that's all we can say. Factory Jackson have asked, what's been your toughest defeat and your most satisfying win, which I guess you've covered with Peter Maritzburg and Worlds, but what's been your toughest defeat? Um, I think Brazil in uh, 2007, maybe. Brazil, I, I came down and I was, had the fastest split. I ended up having a nail go through my tyre and punch it. A nail? Yeah. Locals. And so I ended up coming in 19th at the bottom, riding with the puncher. Uh, Maddie went and, and won the race, but it, I was lying, I think. I'd caught up to second overall in the World Cup behind Petey, and then Petey went on to, to win the World Cup. But it was a bit of a, bit of a pivotal moment that year, was Yeah, it? it was just a tough race. You know, I was, I was pretty pissed off about it. and Obviously put there by yeah. the French. Probably. <laughs> not, they cheat at racing, but it's been rumoured. <laughs> I don't know why Ed Lee has asked some questions. First question from him is, do you piss in the shower? <laughs> He's a strange I man. think you've got to piss in the shower. Yeah, damn right, man. Yeah. Have you ever stolen anything? I have. I can't remember what the last thing I stole was, but... I like to get them. I'm not ashamed about it. <laughs> <laughs> And the last question from me is, how much is six eggs? I don't know where the egg things come from, but... Well, what currency do you want it in? Rand. Oh. No, like... pounds. Screw Rand, that's your own shit. <laughs> and worthless. Four pounds? It's got millions. Is that right? How, how much is six eggs, everyone? About two quid. 139. 139? 139. Oh, 139. we've got an oldie shopper over there. What about for the rest of us who shop at White Rose and M&S? <laughs> <laughs> Just a bit more. Two quid something. Eh? It's like 25, 30 grand, yeah? Yes, but more than that. Have you not seen the rand lately? It's gone through a bit of a roof since they rediscovered gold in the mines. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You own any gold mines? Or was no. that just a rumour? That was a rumour. Good rumour though. Yeah, you definitely don't own a gold mine? No gold mine. <laughs> Nothing to do with a gold mine? Nothing to do with gold mine. Okay, that's that. Just diamonds. Right. Eh? Just diamonds. Diamonds, just diamonds. diamonds. Yeah, just diamonds. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> diamonds? A little bit, here and there. Have you got... <laughs> no. No, you no, 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 not in mine. No, but you, it's it's regulated now, so there's no fiddling diamonds like you used to be able to. Yeah. <laughs> right. Questions. Thank you. Questions from the floor. Go on, there, my man. Rob, do you want another shot of vodka? No. <laughs> <laughs> and what's the best Santa Cruz bike you've ever ridden in? If you, if you could have one bike ever, what would it be? And also, if you couldn't choose a Santa Cruz, if you can answer that. You know, I, had, I rode that Honda, which was quite an impressive bike. But, um, yeah, as I said earlier, I went on to Santa Cruz and I've won the most World Cups I've had on any other bike. So I'd probably stick to Santa Cruz for that reason. I'm going to ask you, the Honda, yeah. the bike was very unique with the gearbox at the front. What was it like to ride? Shower suspension? I mean, was it as good as it looked? Yeah, the bike rode quite well, but it, it had a lot of drag. So we had the chain in the gearbox and then the external chain. So you had twice the drag coasting. So... As soon as you weren't pedaling, you'd lose a lot of time. Coasting it out yeah. of the drag? Why? Because it was constantly turning constantly the gears turning, at the front? Yeah. yeah. We ran like an oil bath to, to give it some more lube and oh, they tried so many different things. Eventually, like, uh, it was just something we had to deal with. But the bike worked really well. The handling was good. Good experience. Is it true that they used to take the gearbox out and lock it in a That's safe? That's true. Not yeah. in a safe, but they used to separate the bikes from the gearbox. Yeah. Did they? Yeah. Did they? Interesting, I liked it when you were on, but it was cool. All right, any more uh, questions? So, uh, the one bike, we still didn't finish with the one bike, sorry. 
No, carry on. <laughs> still going. Uh, I would think that Bronson is, is the one by. Oh, sorry. you got a question, haven't you? How did it make you feel when Gwyn won with no chain this year? Yeah, it, I definitely went back on TV to watch it. And it was just weird that Red Bull TV didn't really show the section that everyone else had to ride. There was no so, cheating. No, I don't think there was cheating at all, but I wanted to see how he came out that woods. Yeah, that, that, would, that would have honestly been just a... But everyone else they cut. showed going through the woods and then they didn't show him, which is disappointing. So you couldn't actually see how he did it. With his exit speed would have yeah. been crucial. Yeah. Any more questions? Yeah. Greg, you seem to have a good relationship with uh, Larry Bruni. Yeah. And uh, I was just interested to see why you think he's a cool guy and also did you have anyone in your career who was a more senior rider who helped you? Um, the more senior guy was Petey. You know, Petey and I used Run to... like that. <laughs> <laughs> You've only got 12 well, we years did. on you. Christ. We, we, we used to train and ride a lot together and, and practice and so that, you know, Steve kind of... Yeah, it was good, you know, it was good for me and, and uh, yeah, Bruni is, um, what separates him from the rest of the French is, is his character and I think that's what, what I enjoy seeing about him, you know, growing up in that French team where they get trained into being world champ, junior world champ was, is quite tough but his character brought him out of that and uh, it's, um, he's also stepped it up into the elites which is tough for a junior world champion. Yeah, there's not, not too many that can make it up. No, they don't all make it. It takes no. them a long, long time. Yeah. It took bright years, didn't it? And uh, he's, he's come up really well and he rides a really good race, like really solid. I mean, he's had a bit of bad luck this last year, but he's consistently up there, you know. So uh, he, he's, a good, he's a good kid. He's going to go far. Any other questions? We, we've talked about your age and retirement. Have you started to think about what you're going to do when you're not racing or is that just something to work out? Gold mines, isn't it? Gold. <laughs> yeah, gold. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'm involved in a jewellery business now and we've actually just recently opened in, in London. I'm sure I'll be involved in that. I, I, I'd like to still stay in the bike industry though. It's, um, it's, it's an industry that I like. It's, it's social. I enjoy riding bikes. I think once I do retire, I'll be able to go and ride the places that I want to go and ride and have a good time doing them and do some events that I wanted to do. You know, I've never done Mega Avalanche. I think it looks a pretty good event. Yeah. It's true, man. You, um, like, yeah, it's very true that, isn't it? You know, I'm not going to go do all the enduros. I don't have a lot. Of, don't have two weeks for every event to go camp out and learn every trail. So I won't be doing that. But there's there's a lot of stuff that I'd like to go and do in, in places I'd like to go and ride that I look forward to. Any more? Are we going to go and do the Soho bike challenge? No one else knows what it is, do they? Neither do I. Right, I don't, <laughs> don't worry about it. Come on, let's do the Soho bike lap thing. <laughs> it's now time for the Soho Bikes Round the Block Challenge. So today, we've had a few staff members from Soho Bikes do the round the block change. Mario the Destroyer is second fastest on a 102.68. Matty, French Matt as he's known, 51.74. And I was quicker than that, but we just decided <laughs> that because I'm a professional, it doesn't count. Right, spin that fuck around. <laughs> <laughs> you might as well all come out here. It's all happening in the alleyway now. Right, Matt here is an Olympic BMXer. French Matt. You rode for France in what year? Uh, he's uh, helping. 96, 98. Matt was pre-BMX Olympics, pre but he's pretty good. He set a time of 51 seconds. Now, I don't want to say your reputation's at stake, but it is. Yeah, Do we start the start line? Line. Up to the line. Up to the start line. <laughs> well, you've got the clock on there. Come on. Up to the line, up to the line. Here it is. This trail of urine is the line. <laughs> <laughs> you get a puncher, it's a needle. <laughs> right, on go. Three, two, one, go! Banana! So Greg Banano underway. We know this man can deliver under pressure. It's what he does best. Avoiding any nasty needles down this filthy alley. Don't want a flat tire on the first straight. There's a cab on the corner. It's cost him a little bit of time. Turns right now into Diablo Street. And this is the first of our left-handers. There's an ambulance actually from an old lady that I hit earlier. I hope she's okay. Oh, and a gap here. The cab only goes through the left there, manages to sneak through that tiny gap. Even Cheryl Cole would have struggled with it in her current state. Oh, famine. Hard on the pedals there. Well, another left-hander. 
And he can see the pizza boy in his sight. He's sprinting after him there. So Greg Bernard, he's quicker than the pizza boy. I can't believe it. Another left-hander. Here we come then. He's going to turn right now. Back in the new alley. Here we go. He's hard on those pedals. The crowd are going wild. Bernard is sprinting for the alley. Is it going to be enough? Yes, it is. Woo! What's the time? What's the time? He's beat French, man. We got a Well, I had to do that. I'm just checking. We're all good, it's done. He's a new record. Let's ride on the wheel. This ain't, this ain't Top Gear, but fuck it. <laughs> right, so Greg Minar has gone fastest on a Wait. limited scoreboard <laughs> with a time of 50.91. Can anyone beat it? Here it is, it's being written up right faster. <laughs> two ends, two ends! You, you've missed, you've missed, you've missed a world champion tonight! Oh my God, what are you doing? And two ends, what are you doing? Where's Clarkson? 50, where is he? He's on a lot more money than me. 50.91, yes! Yes, done, that's it. Yeah. Yeah. Well done, everyone. Well, thanks for coming. We'll see you next time on Soho Bikes TV. Look at that, it's perfect. Three hours. Let's give Greg, let's give Greg a for coming in as well. Thanks, Greg. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I'm joking. Where's Nick? Here you go, mental. <laughs>